Hello everybody, it's Julia here from the Highly Sensitive Tarot and I'm here today to do a VR and um, this is a VR to Ramon at Moon Scarab. Um, I saw his video, oh, must have been a few weeks ago now, maybe three weeks ago or so, I think. And um, at the time I was having a break and not recording any videos, but I'm starting to sort of feel better and come back now. So, um, so yeah, I've been sort of pondering um, this VR. This is this is one tarot card and ten situational questions of which tarot card you would choose to represent that situation. Um, and on the whole, I have picked one card for each question, um, but there is one question <laughs> where I pick four cards. Um, but there you go. I hope I will be excused um, for that. So without further ado, um, actually, let me just think, who else have I seen this tag, who I've seen do this tag? I watched Toadstool Tarot. I watched Hermit's Cave. I watched um, Elaine at Tarot Tats and Tea. Um, and just this morning, actually, I've watched Farah at Faraway Astrology and Tarot. Um, I really enjoyed everybody's videos and to be honest I can't really remember um, everybody's sort of individual choices, just a few of them I think, but this has actually been quite a tough tag to do. Um, it took some real um, it took some real thinking about for some of these questions. Um, although the questions themselves are quite light-hearted on the whole, um, they really have made me think, and I think they have everybody, actually. I think everybody has, um, has sort of pondered at least some of these questions quite a bit. So <laughs> anyway, without further ado, so the first question, um, and I'm using my Pensive Path tarot deck to illustrate on the whole here as well. So which one card is most inspiring to you? And I have picked the Nine of Pentacles um, for a few reasons, to be honest. Um, I'm a Virgo. The Nine of Pentacles is one of my sort of deacon cards um, in astrology. Um, it's always resonated quite a bit. I've always looked at this card and just really sort of wished, I suppose, that I was the the beautiful woman in the garden, surrounded by birds and flowers and trees and sometimes cats and, you know, all sorts of gorgeous things. But although this is a pentacle card and you could argue that this was about material wealth, I think to me it's just always represented um, a contentment, you know, a satisfaction and a contentment with where you're at in life and what you've achieved. Um, it's like she has earned the right to be content, you know. Um, she's been through some of those struggles in life and she's come out the other end of it and she deserves to be content. Um, and I think that's what it, it really represents to me, much more than having a material wealth. It's about a, an abundance of peace and contentment and um, just being at one with your environment, you know, enjoying, enjoying your home, which is something that, you know, really means a lot to me. I very much enjoy my home and being at home. I feed the birds. Um, I have so many birds in my garden. It's unreal, actually, at the moment. It's costing me an arm and a leg to feed them. Um, but, you know, I just love nothing more than to be out pottering around in my garden with the birds, with the cat. Um, if I could be, I'd be in a dress like this as well. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's it's those kind of feelings really that this card gives me. So question number two is which card is most distressing for you? And I went back and forth on this card a few times actually. 
sorry I'm just putting my heater on and off even though it's quite warm outside today it's still bloody cold in my bungalow so I'm sat here up a sort of dark corner having to put my little heater on so yeah which card is the most distressing for you and it was difficult to choose because I've always had a bit of an issue with the two of swords um for me I see that as being um when I can't make a decision and that for me is like being in hell you know that should I shouldn't I being stuck um that's a really unpleasant place for me to be but I think on the whole I've decided to choose this card which I hope you can see properly um, it's the five of pentacles and um, even though the two of swords is a very difficult card for me this is much more of a difficult card for me really because I just cannot abide um, the haves and the have-nots in life you know the rich and the poor um, I can't stand suffering I can't stand that life is so unfair for so many people um, you know in this card here we can see everybody wrapped up in their winter coats shopping and then there's this man in the snow and I bet people have walked past him and ignored him and we see that in every aspect of our daily life really don't we is that people that have will walk past the people that don't have and um it just i don't know it just is such a sadness to me i think really um you know i've always worked in professions where i've i've looked after other people you know, I was a mental health nurse and then I was a housing support advocate. Um, I've always worked with a lot of people that didn't have very much and that had a lot of challenges and a lot of struggles. And um, yeah, I just, I don't know. It just makes me despair about life, if I'm honest, really, to, you know, I don't. I don't understand how people can justify having so much when other people have so little. I think that's it, really. Um, the next question is, which one card is most enigmatic for you? And that one was easy. And I think other people have chosen this card also as the High Priestess. And she really does look enigmatic in this card, doesn't she? Um, I like to see the High Priestess as shown as somebody other than a young, beautiful woman. Um, you know, this woman looks like she's been round the block, doesn't she? <laughs> she's she's seen it all um, and she's not impressed, I don't think, um, really. But I remember reading um, about the High Priestess and it said, you know, she alone has travelled to the land of the dead and returned Um you know, she can lead you through the darkest parts of your life and bring you back again. And um, so that's, you know, that's really enigmatic, isn't it? Um, so question number four is what card would you put in a time capsule for a thousand years for humankind? And this one was fairly easy as well. This is the lovers. Um, and really, for me, this is this is again sort of tied up in my fears really about where humankind is is heading because you know our interpersonal relationships are changing aren't they you know I'm I'm single at the moment and I'm you know I've been on dating sites on and off um, over the last few years online dating and it's not a very comfortable experience you know it was much better years ago when people used to just go to the pub or you'd meet somebody at work or you know you'd meet real people in real life and um, you know this is a big fear for me really that that these these intimate sort of interpersonal relationships are losing um, out to 
to social media and technology and the fact that we're all sat on our phones all the time or in front of a piece of technology of some kind or another, just like I am today. <laughs> and that we don't actually get out and meet people anymore and enjoy those experiences. And I, this one particularly, I just love because it's really quite old fashioned, isn't it? This is like a courting couple and they've got like their their grandma sat there to sort of supervise them. So that's beautiful, isn't it? So, yeah, there we go. Now, question number five. This is the one where I've been naughty, I guess, because I've chosen four cards for this one. <laughs> and this was if you were elected president of a newly um, created country, what card would you choose for your flag? And I was thinking about it and I came up with so many things that I think are important to a society and I just couldn't I couldn't decide so I thought I'm going to have a card from each suit um, of the minor arcana and I th actually I've also got a major in here as well but I'm going to have one card to represent each element I guess is a better way to describe it so you know we have flags don't we that are um in cut in four you know we have something in each quarter of the flag so that's what my flag would look like so the first card of the quarter is the ace of wands and that's just because i think that mankind really does need that um that spark that impulse um that sort of seed of self-confidence and dynamic energy to start creating things and then the next card is to represent and obviously the wands is to represent fire i chose the justice card to represent air and um as i was going through the pensive path i realized that the justice card in this deck is not really what i would want to see on a flag because <laughs> although this man might definitely have deserved having his head caved in here by this woman um because we don't know what he's done there is a justice here but it's not really the justice that i want to see in my world so i had a look in one of my other decks the tower of the abyss and i thought actually i would quite like to see this on a flag this eye you know and this is not like an, an Illuminati eye um, that's watching you like Big Brother. But this is a this is just an eye of truth. You know, your actions are mirrored. You know, you can see yourself in this eye here. And um, that there's the justice. <laughs> and, and obviously it goes to represent sort of truth and equality. And as I said, you can't escape the eye. Um, I also for my pentacles, I've chosen the six of pentacles for air, for earth, obviously, and this is something that I feel very strongly about in society. Is this sort of um, this energy of give and take, of um, giving and receiving, and that everyone and everything has a value, and um, you know, it's important to share, it's important to be generous, it's important to cultivate good karma for yourself. So that's a really nice card. Um, and then I, um, for the water, I've chosen the Ten of Cups because, well, it's a beautiful energy, isn't it? And I would like to think that in any country that I would create or be any part of, that that emotional um, fulfillment was valued in that society just as much as anything else really um, and again I don't particularly like this card in the pensive path um, just because it's clowns <laughs> I'm not a big fan of clowns so I again looked in the Tower of the Abyss and I chose this one um, this is the Ten of Cups here and this is much nicer, isn't it? This is something that everybody should 
be able to achieve if they want to in life. You know that that importance is placed on having an emotional fulfillment of, of whatever kind you value, you know. So, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting distracted. There's so many birds in my garden and I know that my cat is out. So I've, I've kind of got one eye on the garden. <laughs> so question number six is, if you were Earth's ambassador to an alien civilization, which card would you choose to represent humankind? And, you know, this was one of the most difficult questions for me. And at one point I had actually decided on the devil card because I just I don't want to make this a video of me moaning about life. But I do despair of people and society a lot of the time, you know, just here in our little tarot tube community. There's. There's behavior that just I don't know it's um there's been some recent behavior I know there's been unfolding dramas for some time on tarot tube over the last month or two about tarot consumerism and such like but just in the last couple of days there's there's been another little unfolding of that and I don't know I just find I think it just it wears me out it just leaves me feeling tired and confused and despairing and um so yeah I was gonna choose the devil card but then I thought no come on I think so I think really what is actually more fitting what really does resonate for me is the magician and obviously in its very positive attributes this card would represent us as people having all the skills and all the tools available to us to manifest a very healthy society to manifest a very healthy um, state of the world for humankind um, but in its lower realms this is really just sort of acting out of ego isn't it the magician this is that smooth talker of Mercury with the willpower of the sun. Um, and, you know, that can be used for good or bad. Um, I really like this card particularly because obviously this is a um, conductor with an orchestra and just with his wand, he's able to create beautiful music. But I guess that wand could also be used to create something that is not so pleasant. Um, so, yeah, I think that's very much represents the light and the shade and the potential of humankind to me that we're we're we could manifest so much greatness. Um, but we don't on, on the whole or a lot of the time, I feel that human beings act out of ego there's not enough sort of conscious thinking critical thinking um there's not enough empathy generally so there we go that's question number six question number seven is um which card represents somebody that you love and this is so easy for me this one it's the sun and it represents my son dylan who is, I think he's going to be, so this is bad, isn't it? He's either going to be 25 or 26 this year. I think he's going to be 26. And he just lights up my life. And he has done since the day he was born. I just love him to bits. He represents, oh, he's just like a glowing beacon of light for me and energy. He's such a bright and clever and articulate boy um he's a good lad you know his heart's in the right place he has good morals good ethics um he's just like the energy force of like this sun really that keeps me going in life so that was easy um number eight actually is easy as well which card would you choose as the cover for an autobiography book and I chose the hermit. 
And again, partly because I'm Virgo, um, I'm Virgo sun and moon. And I think I have Virgo in six placements within my chart. So, um, you know, there's a lot of earth um, energy, mercurial energy within me. But the Hermit card has just always resonated for me, always. Um, it's my natural tendency in life to introspect and to seek solitude, particularly in times of trouble. Um, I value that sort of peaceful stillness. Um, I find that I'm much more creative when I have enough time alone. Um, and I really, really value time alone to reflect really on things. I find that if life is busy and there's too many people around, I can't think. And I end up, um, I end up not really knowing where I end and somebody else begins. That sounds weird, doesn't it? I think it's, it's possibly part of my autism. I'm not really sure, but I find that I, my own person sort of blurs when I'm around too many other people. And it's like I lose sight of my own needs and my own thoughts and my own feelings. <laughs> and um, so, you know, this, this energy is really, really important to me. Question number nine is if you could upgrade a minor arcana into a major, what would it be? And, you know, this one I pondered such a lot and deliberated such a lot. And I went back and forth and back and forth. And in the end, I chose the Ten of Pentacles um, just because I think that this um, this card really does represent family, community, that sense of belonging. It can also represent our ancestors, can't it? And our family line, where we come from, um, which again is this sense of belonging, this sense of identity, of um, knowing yourself, of knowing who you are and where you come from and um, yeah feeling part of something and I think I think that this would fit in very nicely into the majors actually because you know the majors are the big archetypal energies where the, as the minors might be more day-to-day -day -day sort of issues that we all deal with so yeah I really think that this um, community, um, ancestors, a sense of belonging, um, feeling part of something, having your own place within something. I think that's really important. Um, and the last question here, if you could mentor one of the pages from the deck, which one would it be? And again, I did deliberate a bit because they're all so important, aren't they? They're all the, the more immature and underdeveloped aspect of ourselves. So they're all obviously really important. But I chose in the end the Page of Swords. If you look at this image here, you can see that this boy here would need mentoring. Um, I don't know what he's been up to, but there's an axe in the background um, there's snow and puddles on the floor. He's rubbing his cold feet. Um, he's, he's been, um, up to something, hasn't he? And I think this is the thing with the page of swords. I think out of all of the pages, this is the one that to me could, could contribute the most positive, but could also cause the most trouble in life if they didn't mature um, in the right way, I suppose. You know, when we look back over history, some of the greatest thinkers um, have brought some of the biggest dangers into our life. Um, I was, and I can't remember his name, but I was just thinking about the man who created the atom bomb. You know, a great thinker, a great scientist, but look what he did. Look what he created and look what that has brought, you know, the damage and the destruction that's brought into our lives. And the, 
you know, I know I realise that's not a great example, but I just think, um, I just think the capacity for harm is much greater when people are just in their logical thinking head and that people who are good thinkers, you know, who have a good mind, really do need to develop good, conscious, critical thinking. Um, you know, they need to develop, they obviously need to develop some empathy and compassion and such like, but within their own thinking, it's really important that they develop um, an, an ability to think critically um, and consciously about things. Yeah, so there we go. <laughs> so there we go. That's all my cards, I think. Um, yeah, I don't think I've missed any questions out. I think other, some other people chose some of the cards I have, like the Lovers for the Time Capsule and the Page of Swords. I think Robin chose that one. I th um, who else did? Uh, I can't really remember. I can't remember. It doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I've really, really enjoyed it. So thanks to Ramon for creating this tag. It's brilliant that lots of people um, are doing this, have jumped on board with it. Um, and I hope that more people do. It's really interesting to see um, people's personal kind of relationships with their cards, I suppose. So anyway, thanks for watching. And um, I hope you all have a lovely weekend it's thursday today in the uk so we're coming up to the weekend it's supposed to actually be 23 degrees here in the uk this weekend which will be heaven because it has felt like the sun hasn't come out since last october really here <laughs> so um so yeah i hope that everybody's well and happy and thanks for watching and i'll see you all again soon